everything that I'm building, where this is access to an actual ebook that shows about maybe 29 or 50 different ways to actually use a trust. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you want, you can download that. It's going to send you an automated email. And, uh, and that's it. All right. So the first thing I want to know from you guys is what do you know already about trust? Right? Not, and not like the friendship trust, right? What do you guys know already about, about uh, the structure of a trust? I know trustees, benefactors. Trustees, but, uh, all right, beneficiaries. Um, there's a great movie. You guys can check it out on Netflix um, with your spouse or friends or whoever else. It's a great movie. Laundromat. Let's hope I spelled this correctly. All right, Laundromat. In this movie, it talks about uh, the Panama Papers. Oh yeah, I've seen that on YouTube. You seen it? Seen the Panama Papers or the yeah. Laundromat on YouTube? No, I seen the Panama Papers. Panama Papers. Okay. Hey, it's so smooth. What <laughs> What was your thoughts about the Panama Papers? I had how they hide their money. That's what. Huh? I was just just. It was interesting. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Well, because they had the Panama Papers and they had the Pandora Papers. Okay. So, what, what was your thoughts about the Panama Papers? So, when when you saw it on YouTube, what was your thoughts? Uh, well, I wish I could learn how to do what they was doing. Okay. All right. What else? Like anything else come come to mind, or so anything stand out to you? That was pretty interesting. Yeah. How they how they avoid their taxes. Okay. Cool. So the Panama Papers, like you said, was. It was basically tax avoidance, right? So tax evasion is against the law, but tax avoidance is not. Right? What's the difference? Uh, the the difference is tax evasion is you're basically lying and saying you didn't make any money. Oh, okay. Tax yeah. avoidance is normally when you're trying to um, offset your taxes. So you might you may earn a billion dollars, but you may you may, then you may say you know hey, but I happen to employ ten thousand people, mm -hmm. right? So Amazon does that very very well. So it's tax avoidance. Tax code kind of requ requires you to Disclo find avoidance and stuff, right? Yep. So what they were doing was legal. Um, but what was illegal about it was that they weren't always reporting who the trustees were. So, oh, okay. and, this, and this is kind of why it ties in. So if you have time on, um, on Netflix, just type in a bond on that, okay? It's a, it's a Netflix movie, so it's not going to be going anywhere. But type it in. It's about maybe maybe an hour and a half, but I guarantee. Yeah, no, no. I promise you. Yeah, I just watched it not too long ago. I promise. So, all right, you guys got this down, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So the trust has three components, and so anyone here a basketball fan? Just one, just two. Okay. All right. What does Phil Jackson or he used to talk about a lot when it comes to uh, offense? Triangle offense, right? All right, cool. Triangle offense. Well, when it comes to a trust, it's basically the same thing. At the top of the triangle, if you, if like we were, you know, all coaches, or whatever. The top of the triangle, you ha you have your grand tour. All right. Off the top of your head, though, what do you guys think, or who do you guys think the grand tour is? The head of the trust. Now let's for percent money. Let's think about this from a, from the aspect of a wealthy family, right? Let's say it's that wealthy grandmother, that wealthy grandfather. Mm -hmm. Who are they? The elders. The elders. What's another word for elder in a family? The grandchildren. Okay. Or, what's another word? Uh, matriarch. 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 Absolutely. That is essentially what the grand tour is meant to be. The understanding is that at some point, the matriarch or the patriarch is going to die. So then it comes into um, the person who is supposed to inherit it all, right? That person is the beneficiary. Or beneficiaries. You can also look at this at almost like a hierarchy of um, how kingship or rulership would be in medieval times, right? You would have your king and queen here. You would have the next in line of the throne, the heirs. Who would you have here? If we're talking about medieval times. The subjects? 
Not the subjects. Mm -hmm. Close though. Oh, like general. general. Not the very close. Not the general. Servants. The knights. Not the servants. So we would have um, the legal people. Kinda. Yeah. Like, I don't know what those are back in the day. The, the regents. And stuff like that. Think about think about every movie. I don't know if you guys watch. You guys watch like Disney with your kids or something like that. Okay. Anybody seen? So I watch Disney a lot with my kids. So you guys seen that movie? Um, it happens to all the movies actually. I'm trying to think of the most recent one that I saw. It was one with Angelina Jolie, but it used to be like Sleeping Beauty, but then it came out with Maleficent, something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. In that movie, it happens in all the movies. There's a king and queen. They always die, right? It's like, damn, mom and daddy always die, <laughs> right? It's always a prince or a princess who's left to fend for themselves, right? Kind of, they kind of locked away. Mm -hmm. And then there arises up an overseer, perfect, right? Uncle, Aunt, uncle, uncle right? Nice. The next person who was meant to be in line for the phone, but they can't because Star. they'll never, right? Scar for Lion King, right? Mm -hmm. This is real, though. Yeah. Yeah. So this person, in medieval times, they call the person the regent. And the regent rules in the event the king and queen are maybe out traveling or get killed all of a sudden when out traveling. But while they're out traveling, this guy's in, you know, he's ruling, right? On behalf, on their behalf, on their behalf. That's our trustee. Oh, we talked about this one. Lion King turns. So Lion Mufasa King. is the grand tour. Mufasa is the grand tour. Simba is the beneficiary. Simba is the beneficiary. And then you would say Scar. Scar is the, would be the trustee. The trustees. Um, the trustee has absolute power up until one or two things happens. Up until the beneficiary becomes of age, mm -hmm. or until there's like some kind of, if right here in the middle of this, this triangle would be the trust agreement, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll put, I'll put this TA, but it means trust, trust agreement. Mm -hmm. The trust agreement, if, if this was an LLC, it would be like on a part operating agreement. And it would tell us how this person can operate, what this person can and cannot do, and then also their reign or how long they can rule basically, right? And it would give us the ability to replace this person if necessary. It would also give us the ability to fire this person if necessary. If we find out that the trustee is doing something that, right, is not up to snuff, our trust agreement allows, or on behalf of the beneficiary, based on what the grantor would have wanted, mm -hmm. allows us to get rid of that person. So, so you would have to have all three. You can't just have a grantor and beneficiary. Nope, you gotta have all three. And the cool thing is this: out of the three, out of this triangle offense, who do you think has the largest liability? The beneficiary, the trustee, the trustee, not the beneficiary. The beneficiary, you think about just think about the word benefit. They are truly there for all benefits. Mm -hmm. The beneficiary is technically meant to be blind. They're not to know, supposedly, all of the assets that are within the trust. Think about, once again, going back to the Disney movie, think about that, that the, uh, the, young, the young prince or princess, they're not in the board meetings, right, that are taking place. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can, you know, now think about this. They're heirs to the throne, but for whatever reason, the trustee never invites them into the war hall or whatever else, right? Same thing here. The beneficiary is meant to be blind in real life why is that good for the beneficiary to be blind so they don't kill you <laughs> you said they don't want to kill you yeah. well okay that's good the plausible not deniability type all right things. cool what's another way, way for us to say that then uh ignorance okay know. um i'll give you guys a scenario I can't think of his name at the moment, but we'll call, I forgot the guy's name. It was brother, his name was brother him. Yeah, two brothers. But Hilton, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Paris Hilton, let's look at C. Paris Hilton is a beneficiary. She does not manage Hilton Estates, Hilton Gardens, right? Okay, we all know that. And then whoever the trustee is. This is not, not is like normally not disclosed right, to the public. And there's a, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a moment. Paris Hilton, what could she be doing that could possibly bring risk to the trust itself? 
partying, partying drinking, drinking, snorting cocaine, right? Mm-hmm. Which I think some of those things she has done before. Making movies. Making movies, absolutely making movies, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she would have to be blind to whatever's in the trust because if she's doing all those crazy things, she becomes a liability. So you, so you want to limit the liability. Wrong, but you want to limit liability. So as as she's partying and living her best life, God forbid if she were to run over somebody with her car, right? What would happen if that if, if that if that were to actually happen? What would that family do? Sue. They would sue the hell out of parents, right? Mm-hmm. And they would think, yo, I'm about to sue me a Hilton. I'm about to hit a lick. Right, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, Bobby, you know, God bless his soul, but he's about to help my pocket get fat. Right, that's mm-hmm. how that's what they think. So, but the but the truth is, does the beneficiary have any assets? No. no, the beneficiary should not have any assets. So when they sue parents, and let's say they happen to win, or there is a settlement, whatever else, she's going to have zero assets. Cool. But back to the protect the, the, uh, the uh, assets. assets at all times. Mm-hmm. Here's a hint about what our current president is doing. You guys heard about the estate tax mm-hmm. that President Biden is going to do? Okay. You guys know how much that's, that's going to be? No. Take a guess. Is it like 40% or something? It's going to be 40, 40% federal only. Mm-hmm. So, that, yeah. So that means if it's 40% from the federal, how much could it be from the state? More. About 15 to 20 percent, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you live in one of those crazy states like New York, whatever. How much? How much is that? I got 40 here from the from the federal. 55%. Yeah, and I got 15 percent from the state. How much is that? 55 percent. 55 percent. That's basically half your dollar, right? So can you imagine if grandma, or grandpa, and this is this is the issue with our communities as African Americans, is that when, not if, when matriarch, patriarch, grandma and grandpa, when they pass away and they happen to have a home, this happens a lot. So they have a home, grandma, you know, grandpa just paid off their home and they didn't refinance it, right? They just paid off their home and someone passes away, right? If not done correctly, if someone did want to inherit or take on, take away the property, Pretty soon, they're gonna have to pay about forty to maybe fifty-five percent in estate tax. That's a lot. Now, can you cut a house in half? So then, so what do you have to do? They're gonna make you liquidate it. And then you can go ahead and decide, you know, how, how you guys are gonna break bread, right? Why? Because the title of the property at the time of death. Is going to be in grandma's name. I'm just gonna put granny. All right, it's gonna be granny's name. So knowing a little bit about the trust, what's one thing we could do to alleviate that? Set the trust um, Maker. for the home. Set up a trust for the home. Granny becomes a grantor. Mm-hmm. It could be you. It could be. It could be you know mm-hmm. your children, right? Whomever, because this is not disclosed to the public. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Is the beneficiary or the trustee that's not disclosed? If done correct, done correctly, the trustee is not disclosed, nor is the beneficiary. The only thing that's disclosed is the grantor. Okay. All right. Okay. And there, and there we go. The, exactly. So it's almost like catch me if you can. She's in, she unfortunately she's in the grave. She's in the ground right now. Okay, that's what I'm about to ask. If they, if the, if the trust was in. The grandma, I mean, like, say the house in the grandma's name, and she didn't have a will, then it goes to, and she didn't, I mean, she didn't have a, okay, go ahead. Let me, okay, I, I, I get exactly where you're coming from. You guys got this written down there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only things I would add right here in these check in these checkpoints is that the, the understanding is that the grantor, the grantor's wishes and operations are through the trust. So just put here wishes um, or desires. Right? And how they want it operated. 
So just as an example, and, the, and, and we see this every day. I'm going to show you guys. I promise. I promise. We see this every day. We're just not aware of it. Who here has been to the Indianapolis Museum, or, the, or it used to be called like the Indianapolis Art Museum, right? Off of 38th and I did the streets because these Michigan, Michigan, not MLK, okay, right? All right, we, we all, we've all been there, right? Mm -hmm. Nice spot, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Anyone been to LA before? I've been at the airport, but that's about it. All right, so real quick, so real quick. Keep, to keep things to, to remember, I'm putting non-disclosures, right? NDA, okay? And this should be for you. I want to make sure you guys, you guys have this in your notes. Trustee, all right? These are people, these are all who is non-disclosed? Yes. It's, so it's only disclosed in the trust agreement, okay? Your trustee and your beneficiaries. They have to sign the NDA? Mm -mm. So what, what I'm saying is that um, your trustee and your benefit, so, if done correctly, Bob should not walk around and say, hey, I'm the trustee of, oh, gotcha. right? Uh, your children should not walk around and be like, hey, I'm the beneficiary of grandma's estate that is worth over $2 million. They become, they become a target. They're supposed to stay in the It's supposed, yeah, because it's for protection. What we're taught though, through media, through music, all this stuff, right? Here's here's what we're taught as as a, as a as a people. We're taught to have an LLC. We're taught to tell everybody in your mama that you have an LLC, mm -hmm. and then we're taught. So these are these are two L's. Sorry. Then we're taught to put every business, every property, every car. Everything of value into this LLC, and then tell people that you own this LLC. Mm -hmm. What that's the essential. That's that you're what, what what we're basically doing is we're putting all of our eggs into one basket, and then we're telling people, about "Look at my basket." <laughs> and if you got a problem with me, check my basket out. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, right. That's not, that's an, no, no, it's horrible. Because all that, all that has to happen now is that for someone to choose to sue you. And a lot of times, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, choose from experience. Most lawsuits do not make it to court. They settle it. So when people who professionally are looking to get paid, they know that 80% of lawsuits end in settlements. So they're, they're not even expecting, they don't even care about winning. They either want maybe 50%. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing right there. Seriously. <laughs> and, and they're like, Ooh. That's a good thing right there. Yeah, they, they just want 50%. That's it. So that's this, this is the this is the issue of what we're what we're, we're taught to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna uh, go back to brands. I have a question. Yeah. Um, can a trust only be set up if the person is still living? Ooh. Technically, yes. All right? That's what I'm about to Technically, ask. yes. Okay. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm recording. So. Yeah, let's be recording. <laughs> I mean, hey. Right? Well, here's the thing, This is which is so crazy. This is a quick point of view. See, but I'll put it easy. And the Panama Papers, uh, that laundry mat touches on that a little bit, right? I think I remember that. I'm going to watch that. So here's what, here, here's what was happening. And here's what people people have done, and I just want you guys to you'll 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 think about this. You'll go, hmm. No, now, now real quick. One thing about one thing that's cool about Indiana is, in Indiana, they will allow the heirs to sell the property of the of the deceased mm -hmm. as long as the purchase price is under fifty thousand dollars. I've done it a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things where it's like, dang, our house is, and I've heard it a lot, you know, our house is worth three hundred thousand dollars. Like, yeah, it is. And my grandma, left, my grandma left this to all of us. Man, that's awesome. And we don't want to get, we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to get nothing less than three hundred thousand. Okay. 
I'll talk to you in a, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. The realtor is going to say, we can do it. We can do it. The realtor may even put it up, put it up for sale. The title company will say, uh, who's head of the estate? You say, what do you say? What estate? We, we didn't, we didn't go here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're going to sell it for over $50,000, you're going to have to petition the court and choose who's going to be head of the estate. You know, people, people do that. They start fighting. Mm -hmm. They like, no, they say, we ain't getting the, I don't know why, but they say, we ain't getting the court involved. Yeah. And then, and then they say, listen, so-and-so said they'll give, and this is sad, but this is the guy on the street. So-and-so said they'll give us 45,000 in two weeks. And, they, they, and that's, that's not what happens. And on four, I, I hate it, but I've done it multiple times. Someone dies, first off, when someone dies, it's public record. So you guys, you know, guys, you guys know how to look that up? I got you. I, I'll show you that. <laughs> Seriously. So when someone passed away, unfortunately, it's public record. In the court records, it actually shows you people who die that own assets. It lists their assets? Life insurance. Not life insurance, but physical assets where the county can tax it, basically. Okay. Oh, okay. So like cars and, and homes, basically, okay. right? So then it's public record, so you can actually reach out to them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times what people, people do to hold, you know, we ain't, we ain't selling nothing until we get, you know, grandma had this house and they come in gentrifying, so we, we want top dollar. Cool, I think you should get top dollar too. Mm -hmm. The only thing is when they petition when they petition the, the state, um, the state, the county, um, to have you know someone head of their estate, all that stuff, it takes time. It takes time. They, and most of most of the time they have to get a lawyer. Right? So in their mind, they're thinking that they, you know, it's a hot market, blah, blah, blah. They're thinking in their mind, 30, maybe 60 days to pay that. They start going through that process. They didn't know they had to get a lawyer. They had to take attorney fees. They had to file this, file that, show up for this, show up for that, show proof that they're heirs, all that other stuff. And then six months later, they're frustrated. And I've seen some. Matter of fact, I've been I've been involved in some deals where unfortunate person person dies. They have multiple properties. The person didn't have a will, right? And their baby mother, whatever, wants to, you know, sell anything, sell anything for for top dollar. She thought it'd be an easy process, and un, un, unbeknownst to her, because you, you have attor attorneys involved, right? And a lot of times, attorneys only move as quickly as you pay them. You know, so the, the attorney themselves may even slow walk it. A year later, the property is still there. What happens though? It's been neglected. It's been neglected, but what, what does the county want? Taxes. Taxes. Yeah. yeah. That's real. So that happens a lot. So this is all part of the probate process then? It's a, yeah, and it's, and it's on purpose. Mm -hmm. The county has it on purpose. See, the county knows that it's going to take you some time to get in front of a judge. But at that time, they're still... Still taxing it. Absolutely, they don't. They don't. They're not going to abate your taxes just because someone passed away. <coughs> if anything, they might even increase it as taxes. Other people way. are increasing the property value, right? So, the, so, how, so how does someone get a, get around that? Well, pretty easy, right? In the Panama Papers, what they were doing was they would have multiple quick claim deeds. So let's say this. This would have like four quick claim deeds. This is real. It's straight up promise you. And they and they'll have multiple trust agreements. All right, let's so say they have four trust agreements. Your trust agreement can have whatever language you want, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys a template for trust agreements, okay? You can add whatever you want in there. You guys got me? So if you wanted your trustees to have to check in with you once a quarter, you can, you can add whatever you want, okay? Is this how they hire, how they hire their wealth or something like that? Yeah, and I'm gonna show you the, the, the key. The key is this though. Every one of these quick claim deeds, the recipient part is blank, mm -hmm. but every one of them is notarized through a public notary in advance. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means they have four different trust agreements written out, but maybe the beneficiary 
is one, one of the beneficiaries is blank. Maybe one of the trustees is blank. They, they plan on, you know, maybe, maybe grandpa decided that he doesn't like his, his current girlfriend and she thinks that she does, she's in there and she's not. You got me? Mm -hmm. So each one, of, each one of these has a notary stamp. Every last one of them has a notary stamp. Which means it, it's official and it's official because it's already been notarized. It's already been notarized. The only place your quick claim deed goes when you're ready to record it is it goes to the county. The county is going to charge you, our county at least, is going to charge you $46.50. That's it. What do you guys know about quick claim deed? Think about think about think about every quick claim deed you've seen. Think about when you guys close on property. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to deal in the legal game, and if you have a quick claim deed, whoever's name is on the quick claim deed becomes part of the property without having a debt added to it. Oh, there's one more thing what you guys think about. On the quick claim deed, who has to sign it? The only person who has to sign it is the person who's taking over the property, right? The person uh, who's the person losing, who's it. losing it. Signing Absolutely. It. Yeah. So I can have so you have a quick claim deed, one of them that is written out to your cousin, one that's written out to LLC, one that's written out to Billy Bob, one that's written out to a different trust. So is this for the same property or, or for the same properties? They would do it, yep. Okay. How, how do you want to do it? Because basically this is their insurance policy. They were doing it with businesses though. No they were doing it they're doing it with businesses, yeah. But this, this is basically their insurance uh, policy. On a quick claim deed, the recipient doesn't have to sign anything. Because a recipient could be a child. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? You guys got me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. The recipient doesn't have to sign anything. So the, the, and then as you guys already know, so this helps me out a lot though by saying this. In a quick claim deed, the grantor relinquishes pro, uh, ability. But the grantee receives. And the best way to the best way to think about that is just the, the E for receives. All right, cool. That helps me out a lot. I swear. When I'm, when I'm, with, with legal stuff, anytime you see the E, it means to receive. All right. But the grantee never has to sign the quick claim deed. The grantee doesn't even have to sign the trustee agreement. Make sense now? Mm -hmm. So you can have four different deeds for different agreements, the grantee or the beneficiaries, and that in this in this example, the beneficiaries could be different for each one. That's what they're doing with the Panama Papers. When you watch when you guys watch the movie, you'll see that there was one one time where unfortunately this husband was cheating on his wife <laughs> and the wife was like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. And so the next uh, maybe a week later the wife goes to the uh, attorney's office and she wanted to basically liquidate all the holdings of their family and then you know file for divorce, right? He had already had years prior another trust agreement set up that was already notarized to where she wasn't even a beneficiary of the trust. Mm -hmm. So she got nothing. So when she requested whatever of them, he basically told them to dispose dispose of trust agreement number five and only use trust agreement number three, basically. So I'm telling, it was, it was ridiculous. So when so, so when she was there, she said, what, you know, all those agreements were notarized and the trust agreements are never recorded. All right. So, all right, I'm lost. So let's say, let's say, just to make things simple, yes. right? Let's all say right. I, I just have one property. Yes. Right? And I have, Four different uh, trust okay. agreements. Okay. Right. And I have four different out of four kids. Okay. So each agreement goes to a separate kid. And is, is, does your example apply to that scenario, or are you thinking of something different? You don't. So with, with the children, the children are, are beneficiaries. Right. The only way, the only reason you would do something like that is if, for whatever reason, one of the four kids um, maybe you didn't like them. Or you guys got a lot of <laughs> this is real though. Mm -hmm. You guys got a lot of contention or you know, whatever, right? And so in your mind, you're like, yo, I'm not gonna even announce this, but when I'm out of when I'm gone, Billy has been a pain in my ass and he's not gonna get nothing. So in that trust agreement, 
it would have as under beneficiary. It's gonna have a line as a beneficiary, mm -hmm. and all this this list names. Billy wouldn't be one. He, it's only gonna have three names instead of four. Okay, so we're talking about just on that one trust agreement. Not, cause I'm confused as to why you said you have four different trust agreements. The that's, only, that's the part that I'm missing. The only reason, so like, um, the only reason, like, maybe in that movie, in the movie or in real life, that people would do something like that is if they're trying to. They're trying to cut somebody out. Prepare to cut people out. They're if already anticipating to cut somebody out, yeah. Well, like, you, like the wife was going after the money and stuff, right. so he already had a trust agreement on, ready to go. For all we know, her out. for all we know, he could have been he could have been a dirty dog the entire marriage, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was his way of having his own insurance policy. Okay. So okay, so, so, yeah. so if you have four different agreements, do you say which one is priority? Do you give a priority to okay? Yeah. Because it's it's been four different documents. Once they're once they're notarized, they're considered to be live documents, and you would just choose whichever one is 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 best suited for you. In movies, like when we're watching movies, or so think about like when we watch a movie and someone has a safe, you know, like an older person has a safe, right? And inside their safe, there is all these documents. It's not a lot of money in the safe. It's just documents, right? All those are they're just different. They're just different trust agreements. That's it. That's all that is. There's different trust agreements. Um, and um, all right, let me, let me give you guys a real life example. All right, you ready? You ready? The museum we're talking about. Well, let's talk, let's think about what what is the what is what is the Indianapolis or they call it something different now, Newfield, right? Mm -hmm. What is that? What's Newfield? It's a display for pictures of. Okay. Something for the public. How did it become about? It's a trust, right? Yeah. No reason. Whose trust is it though? Do you have any information? I mean, I know like Lily's home is over there. So huh? I know like Lily's home, the guy that started Lily. Is Lily's home over there or is that his home? <laughs> well, that's that's his home. I guess that's his home. Yeah. So who was the who was the grantor? Probably him. Eli Lilly. Right. Okay, cool. All right. Who was the trustee? Huh? Don't know. All right. I'm gonna do. Everyone got the. Everyone has their phones, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We're gonna come back to this. I'm not. This is not off the hook. But I'm gonna give you guys an easier one. All right. And I haven't figured out what this state says. I got you guys one as well. Okay. Here's, here's an easy one. Then we'll, then we'll go back to Eli Lilly. All right. Okay. Um, Who's my who's my who's my grand tour in this? Bill and Melinda. Bill and Melinda. All right, cool. Let me just go B and M, right? Who's my trustee? Google it. So I want you guys, because this happens in our face every single day. I want you to Google it just on your phone. Trustee of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, what do you guys think about this? If you if you have to have a trustee, then what is it? A trust. a trust. Then we think it's a foundation. Y'all, y'all That's just because that's just what they named it. That's just you exactly. You can name the trust whatever you want. You can name what the fuck you want. You can name it uh, well, stupid man, ass. So uh -oh. it was a foundation. <laughs> no. Okay, better yet. When you go to the bank, what is the bank? The trust fund. You, the, the every trust. bank is a trust. They have a board of directors, trustees. Oh. Mm -hmm. I swear to you, every university is a trust. Every endowment fund is a trust. We we think it's about an LLC. That's not how you. That's not how you preserve your wealth. LLC is not how you preserve your wealth. An LLC is used to obtain. But you don't put your, your wealth in an LLC. Nobody do that. 
All right, who, who, who is the trustee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? It says Bill Gates, I see Melinda Gates, and Warren Buffett. Thank you. I want you guys to think about that. Let that sink in. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, is a trustee, let, let this sink in, is a trustee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So basically, he runs the company. I mean, he runs the trust, right? Yeah, he runs all the operations. But who's the, but who would have been on, on behalf of who? Who would have been the fishier? The Bill and Melinda. The Bill and Melinda. Look that up. I just oh damn! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh damn! Straight up. Look, when you hear them say, "I'm not giving my children anything," <laughs> well, where is it going? To a trust fund. To a foundation. To the trust that works on their behalf. That's the same thing here, y'all. The reason that grandma would have to pay 50% tax is because it's not in a trust. When, when they pass away, they don't pay any taxes because they put it in a trust. That's the difference. Okay, so how do you move an LLC? I mean, you know, how do you move your, your assets from the LLC to a trust? Quick claim deed. Quick claim deed. It's, it's quick claim deed. It's $46. It's that easy. Quick claim deed. You do a quick claim deed from if you're the owner, so if you do a quick claim deed from yourself to whatever you name that trust. Well, it makes a lot of sense now too because when me and Brandon opened our LLC, they told us to have a third person, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. We made Duran mm -hmm. the third person, so it makes a lot of sense now. But but putting it all together, it would still be better than because Duran because Duran is the beneficiary, but and you have and, a trust, and Brandon is the. The guardian and I'm the trustee. Oh really? Yeah. Think think about when you go to the bank. Anybody ever wired wire money before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, what they ask you? Think about the all right, bro, bro. Think about what do they ask you? Just say it. Just tell me what the what you number, want. Number, all right, well. And who is it going to? All right. Name what, their bank or their what do they call that though? The the shit, what do they call it? Come on, you come on. You guys know. Think about it. So about the when actual you, when you wire money, yeah. yeah. And you fill out the form. The the beneficiary. It's called a beneficiary on the form. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wanna know why? You know who the trustee of your bank account is? You. The fucking bank? Oh, the bank is your trustee. I swear to God, they are. They, they have one. It's written there. When you open your account, it's like they tell you it's it, it a trustee of your account. Yeah, you can really on behalf of the FDIC, who, who's supposed to insure it for you? It's in our face every day, I mm -hmm. promise you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, okay? Yeah, Bill's, Bill and Melinda aren't giving their kids anything. Whoopie whoop, they're leaving, they're leaving it to the trust. Mm -hmm. How do we know? Because that's basically where half of their wealth is right now, okay? But those kids are probably beneficiaries to that trust. Come on, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they're not getting any money or checks, but they're gonna be access to the funds. They, they may get distributions quarterly or yearly or whatever else. Oh, so and that's spelled out in the trust agreement, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so the trust, so the trust can pay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The trust can pay the trust fund trust fund, kids, all trust fund all baby? That. What's the yeah. benefit of being a trust fund baby if, if you can't get no money? Yeah. yeah. So I know someone that actually has, they needed a, a house. So the trust purchased the house, but they can't sell the house because it's in the, the agreement. That because it's like them, their sister, and their brother. So they purchased the house through okay. the trust. But they can't sell the house. If they if they sell the house, they have to get permission, and all the money has to go back right, to the trust. The trust. Check this out. You ready for this? They probably can sell the trust, though. Are you ready for this? <laughs> as long as this is the the way that you don't pay taxes is when the money goes back to the trust. The reason that grandma, the reason that you know Billy, Mark, and everyone else is grieving about grandma. The reason that they're gonna to have to pay that bill of 50% is because it wasn't in the trust. But even if they put grandma's property into a trust, you can name it the trust, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can literally name it Granny Trust, okay? You can name it Granny Land Trust if you want, all right? So that's why they, okay, that's why they probably could be doing that. Yeah, that's why Walt Disney, when, before he built Disney World, mm -hmm. he put every partial of land in a trust. trust when he liquidates or buys or sells 
instead of him cashing out, he just put that money in the trust. If you're the, if you're the trustee or, or whatever else, you can still have that trust by other things. It's not like it can't, it, it's not like it's, it, you know, becomes ice and it freezes, you know, it becomes mm -hmm. frozen. Mm -hmm. You can still have that trust by other things. And you can have Billy Bob rent your property and pay your trust. Yeah. And then the trust pays you a distribution out of it. Yep. But don't you have to pay taxes on that distribution? You would. You would. But the trust wouldn't have to pay. But the you. trust is good. It's still going to grow. All right. So let's go back to Eli Lilly real quick. All right. So you guys. So now you guys know that New Fields. Think, just think about it. Who here has ever been to the museum? Did John go to the house in the back of the museum? No one has gone to the house in the back of the museum? Absolutely. The Lilly house. Check it out, though. Think, think about this, y'all. We got the museum here. What do you have across the street? It's not a cemetery. No, no, you think about yeah, no, no, no. no. Think so not, okay, okay. Across, across there, not across that street. So across 38th Street. What's across 38th Street? Yeah, it's a golf course. Who do you think that golf course belongs to? The trust. Yeah. It's guarded perfectly. Somehow or another, it's, it only got like 100 members. All right, check this out. Okay. So we know that Eli Lilly, right, the actual person, was a grand tour. All right. I want you guys to look, look this up on your phone real quick. There's something called a charitable, it's, yes, that is what charitable, right? But charitable trust. If someone is typing your phone and tell us what it, what is a charitable trust? What is a charitable trust? What's a charitable trust? What is a charitable trust? Now look. A trust that you donate money to the charity, right? Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A charitable trust is essentially a way to set up your assets to benefit you, your beneficiaries, and a charity. All at the same time, a charitable trust could offer many financial advantages, but it's not really talking about that. All right, click it and just see what some of those financial yeah. advantages are. Um, let me, I'm, I'm a, as you're, as you're fact, fact checking, I'm going to tell you guys the, the quick and dirty of it. A charitable trust is still a trust. The biggest difference is that the charitable trust, some of the beneficiaries happen to be a charity or a nonprofit. Now you can create your own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can make your own nonprofit a beneficiary within your trust. And as long as a certain percent of your profits or proceeds happens to go to this charity that you named as a beneficiary, you pay no taxes. So Okay, and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. So, like, say for instance, I have a business, right? Yes. And then I then I form a trust. Can my business pay that trust? Can your business pay? Yeah, but you you, you wouldn't want to do it that way. You want the trust to pay the business. You want the trust to pay the business. I'm lost. All right, cool. That's that's cool. Let me uh, give you an example. So, all right, charitable trust. And we'll, we'll come back to you out of again. What you want is whatever whatever you would quote unquote invest in your trust as far as money, that becomes your contribution. All right. The idea is in so many ways, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is this is you guys heard of cash flow banking? Yeah. No. Uh, I think so. You heard of cash flow banking a little bit? Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just make it really kind of simple. All right. We all we all know what life insurance is, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And we'll use small numbers like a $20,000 life insurance policy, okay? And I'll make it into like a graph bar or something like that. So this is our $20,000 life insurance policy, okay? And let's say this is with Transamerica, okay? And we make a, uh, a $20 a month payment to Transamerica. Now, we're able, if we want, we can make 
you know, when you have life insurance, what's the point of it? In case you die. In case you die, baby. Yeah. When you die, we all gonna die. When so. you die, yeah. All right. When you die, but what? People who can have fun money probably. Yeah. Beneficiaries. Cool. All right, we're getting there. Can your beneficiaries be a person? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Could it be a trust? Yes. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. If, if, so this is, this, this is us becoming, this is beneficiary, right? In case you guys are taking notes, it's beneficiary. So, so some event happens, someone passes away, and you can make the, you can put in your life insurance policy one of your, your beneficiary to be a trust. We're good? Everyone's good with that so far? All right. Who here has money in like their stock account? Each trade account, whatever else, right? Okay. And then I'll like make a chart occasionally for these stocks. This is a stock account. Does your stock account allow you to have been a beneficiary? Yes. Yes. So you make it the trust the beneficiary. Make trust the beneficiary. For those of us who have IRAs or 401ks, right? Mm -hmm. Does your stock Right? So everything's feeding the trust. Everything's feeding the trust. If you wanted to, you could take one, one investment property and quick claim it into the name of the trust. All right? You could sell it. So I'll put sell. Mm 